Hello, I've got a question for you. Would you let a man, a young man that you don't know, into your house, who sleep beside your children's bedroom, and to get up in the morning and go to the fridge in your house, and sit down at your table and eat breakfast at your expense? You don't know this person, and, uh, but he's coming in, he's taking what you've earned and worked for, he's living in your house uh, without your permission, and uh, would you be okay with that? Ask yourself, would you? Someone you didn't know? Let me tell you, of course you wouldn't. We all know the answer. That's a reason for rhetorical questions. But why are we allowing this to happen in Ireland as a country? If the nation is the enlarged family and the country is the enlarged family home, why is it that it's allowed at the moment by this Irish hating government, that 40% of all people claiming refugee status in Ireland are coming to Dublin Airport without any passport, without any identity papers. We don't know who these people are. So 40% of all asylum seekers coming into Dublin Airport have no passport, no identity papers. Of course, they have them as they get on the plane, but they destroy them somewhere on the plane or on the way to the plane. We are Idiot. The government are acting as idiots to allow these people in, and it is a danger, unvetted people who we do not know, uh, allowing these people into the country is a danger to the security of the Irish people. That's point number one. Point number two is that even now they say, oh, it's all because of the Ukrainians. No, it's not all because of Ukrainians claiming to be Ukrainians. And even the government actually, remember the 40% thing, 40%, even the government admit that 40% of people claiming to be Ukrainian refugees or asylum claimants coming into Ireland are young males. Remember, young males in Ukraine are supposed to be over there fighting and nobody under 60 is allowed to be, no males under 60 are allowed to leave the country? Hmm. Well, how, how come that 40% of Ukrainian asylum seekers coming into Ireland are young males? Doesn't make sense, does it? It sounds as if we're being lied to, hand over fist, and the government is allowing that. Point number two, it's not just Ukrainian refugees, the numbers. I think so far this year we've taken in just over 70,000 asylum claimants already this year, 70,000. But excluding Ukrainians, there's been 550% increase in the number of of non-Ukrainian refugees. So all those coming from uh, outside the EU claiming international protection status has been a 550% increase in claims. Why is there an increase? Because Minister Roderick O'Gorman, who's out of uh, come all ye to anybody that to come to Ireland, and if you got asylum status, you would get a free house, use of a free house within four months. And of course, these people know, because the word goes out in the grapevine across the world, that Ireland is a soft touch because of government policy. Come in, get free house, uh, free welfare, free legal aid. Basically, we are the soft touch of Europe. And look at the PPS numbers. Let's just look at the numbers. Number three, I believe, is that there's been a huge increase in PPS numbers given out this year. It's not just to Ukrainians. It's not just people coming as asylum claimants. No, there's a huge amount of people. Would you believe that only less than one in four uh, PPS numbers given out until the end of August this year were given to people born in Ireland? Let me repeat that. Less than one in four PPS numbers given out this year until the end of August were given to people born in Ireland. So for the PPS numbers, we are a, mi we are a minority. It's incredible, isn't it? So when people... Now, there, I see there was a guy there claimed the IRSP, or the political wing, used to be the political wing of the INLA. Now, for the vast majority of my childhood, the INLA were just drug dealers, and the IRSP were their uh, political uh, mouthpiece. But I see there's IRSP were putting up someone on Twitter that a guy spoke at Eastwall there yesterday, and he was talking about, oh, yeah, multiculturalism is great, and these people coming in, and as long as they integrate, everything will be fine. As long as there's consultation, as long as the, the local communities are informed before they're stuffed into, before these uh, unknown people come into community, are, to, are, are told about the 
community representatives in uh, East Wall, that would be okay. It's not okay. It's certainly not okay. Reason why? Because Ireland is absolutely full. It's full to Gonnells. We're not taking in any more. Actually, the people who have come here under false pretenses, anybody here coming here illegally should be deported immediately. And all those people who have come in without a passport, who have come in with bogus claims, they all need to go back to their own country and look after themselves. Ireland has no responsibility to house the world whatsoever. We have to house Irish people first. Irish people should come first in Ireland. That should be accepted by all Irish politicians. So the problem is numbers. We can see that different countries have tried different models of integration. For instance, in Sweden, you can go along and you can celebrate your own culture and form your own ghetto. And of course, Sweden is the country where bombs and grenades go off virtually every night, where the, uh, the rape of sexual assault has gone through the roof. Whereas France, for example, uh, you're supposed to come in, you're supposed to get along and be French, speak French, not have any separate religious ethnic groups. Uh, so they're for complete integration. But in both countries, it is absolutely failed, both in Sweden and in France, be it integration or multiculturalism. Look, the basic problem is basic numbers. of People coming from a different country with different moral values and cultural values, they cannot integrate into, uh, in large numbers, come into countries like Sweden and France without an increase in violence, and an increase in sexual assault. And also, there's also a large, large drain on the financial resources of the country. And Ireland, for example, at the minute, the taxpayer is paying for one in four, one in four hotel beds at the minute are taken up, funded by the Irish taxpayer, paying for asylum claimants. That's just madness. We can afford that. And why, anyway, why should we destroy our tourism industry to help people? We don't owe these people anything. So bottom line is that Ireland is full. We cannot take any more people, especially the people coming in here, these young males, unvetted males coming into Ireland, uh, should not be allowed at all. They must be stopped at our border and put back on the plane in which they come. They, no one should get off a plane in Ireland without, unless we know who they are and where they're from. And if they can't prove who they are, where they're from, they should be immediately back on the same plane. But bottom line, the problem is numbers. Ireland is full. There's far too many people come here. All these bogus uh, economic migrants who are looking to benefit from the generous welfare system we have in Ireland, from the housing uh, help that we give out in Ireland, and asylum seekers, many, many, many of whom are completely bogus, and those who come here legally should be sent home immediately. Ireland is full. The problem with these refugee centres is that they're here. Not, it's not just a problem of consultation. No. Because once these people come into Ireland, they can move around. And uh, that's a problem for the whole country. It's not just a problem for local communities. We want a political solution to this problem. We want a responsible immigration policy, which where immigration policy is for the benefit of Ireland and of Irish people. And it is not based at all on the desire of anybody, be they economic migrants from uh, the rest of Europe, from, of economic migrants from outside of the EU, or if it's asylum seekers from around the rest of the globe. It shouldn't be based on their desire to come here. It should be based solely on what is good for Ireland and the Irish people. Ireland at the minute is completely full. Our population has gone up by over 1 million people in the last 20 years. We're absolutely packed with Gunnels and we've got to stop the rate of immigration into Ireland and those who came here illegally or who are a drain on Irish finance welfare system should go back to their own country and look after themselves. It's not our duty to house the world. My name is Herman Kelly. Go to Margaret.